What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the Time Warp tool inside of Cubase, so let's get right to it. So the Time Warp tool is a very handy tool to know how to use, especially if you're a film composer, but this can also work if you're just working on your own music as well. So the Time Warp tool, what it does is that it automatically calculates the tempo at which you can hit a specific beat, or if you're scoring to picture, you can hit a very specific place in the film. Now, I don't have any picture to show you, but I have this piano track here with a couple of notes that are off time that I can pretty much show you what the Time Warp tool is doing. So the way we activate the Time Warp tool is this little rectangle that seems to be getting farther away. So there's four little rectangles here. If we activate it, you're going to see that the bars up here turns red. Now, this means that the Time Warp tool is activated. And all you need to do from here is, let's say this beat, this little rectangle here, I want it to align to measure two. And let's assume that this is my movie and I want that specific frame to land right on beat two because I have a very important musical hit that I want to put there. So not directly on the two, but a little under it where you can see this little metronome thing. And then you're gonna click and just drag to the left. And notice how, if you look at the left corner here, right here in very little numbers, you're gonna see a yellow 125. So my tempo is actually 120, but notice how it, it shifted to 125 because Cubase said that in order for me to land on beat two, I need to make sure that this is faster so that I can land this note on beat two. And notice how this one landed, but now this one is a little bit off. I can just grab this and stretch it a little bit back that way it lands right on time. And then let me push this one back a little bit here. And now we have our points synced up to these measures or beats. And notice how here you could see 124, 122, 115, and 120. These are the tempos that I need to work with. And again, this is a hypothetical situation, but these are the tempos I need to work with in order to get my picture or my music in sync with these beats here. So now we're gonna do a different example, but this time I'm gonna show you another cool way we could do this using marker tracks, which is why I have this here in yellow so we can see it very clearly. And what marker tracks are is just you lay a marker on Cubase, letting you know that in a specific place, I want something to happen. So this is essentially what we call sync points in film scoring language, but in the regular music language, we could just call them markers or whatever it is that you want to call them. So we're gonna go ahead and create one marker here. And let's say I just call this hit one. And then I wanna create another one on two and I'm gonna call this hit number two. So we have hit two. And then I'm gonna create my last one on beat four and call this hit number three. Now I wanna make sure that bar two lands on hit one, bar three lands on hit two, bar four lands on hit three. So the way we do this is we go to time warp and here, instead of grid mode, we're gonna switch it to events because events equals markers. So now when I grab measure two, it's going to slip, but automatically snap as I get close to the event, just like that. And I'm gonna grab three and do the same thing, snap to two. And then I'm gonna grab four and just make sure it's snapped there so we're good. Now when I let it go, notice how now hit one, hit two, and hit three are synced to measures two, three, and four. If I go to the time warp tool, we could see that Cubase said that in order to get to measure two, I need to start at 130, slow down to 96, go to 119 and then go back up to 120 in order to hit all of these sync points directly on these measures. So Cubase does all of the calculations for you. You don't have to do anything and you can get to composing within these parameters. 
So that's a basic example on how you could take advantage of the time warp tool inside of Cubase. If you have any questions, just go ahead and drop your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to check out the John Moon Studios store. There's a variety of merch with the official John Moon Studios logo on it. So go ahead and check it out. And as always, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I'll see you guys soon.